So for this very simple pouch, all you need are your two wool exterior pieces. I am using, um, it's 20% blend of wool, 80% rayon. Um, friend and I joke that it should be called rayon, but it doesn't look like rayon, it looks like wool. So it is wool and you can pick it up at Joanne or Hobby Lobby. We cut these, this is a small pouch, so this one's cut five and a half by seven and a half. Then I have the lining pieces, which I interface with um, P44F. It's very lightweight, and I like it that it gives it a little bit of body. If you don't have that, don't go get it. Just starch the heck out of your lining and then cut your pieces. You just don't want it stretching while you sew, and starching it helps it to not stretch. And that's why I use interfacing, because it keeps it from stretching as well. And then you have your zipper, which um, on a five and a, or a seven and a half wide, you're going to cut your zipper at six, seven, five. So if you do the large pouch, which is eight and a half wide, you're going to cut your zipper at 7.75. <clears throat> this one, we're just doing the smaller size. And then it's up to you if you want to do a cork tab. I have a piece of cork. It's one, in a, it's one by one. Or if you want to do a fabric tab because you think your machine won't be able to sew through this, or you don't have cork or vinyl because you can use vinyl as well. So um, you can just use a same one by one piece of cotton. I have my double sided tape, temporary basting spray. I love Aileen's and my little scissors. So to get started, what you need to do is take your hoop and I hoop my hoop up with interfacing. I don't use stabilizer. I think it's very expensive and I prefer using interfacing because I have a ton of it. When I'm all done, um, I will cut it out of the interfacing here and then I'll adhere it to the back because I have, this is just P44F. So I'll just, because it's fusible, I will fuse it to the back of the bag. Just adds a little more stability. And so what you want to do is you want to spray this with temporary basting spray. I float a lot of my stuff. I don't, I don't hoop it. I don't like the hoop burns and I don't do anything that's crazy dense that I don't need it shifting. Um, then the next thing you want to do is take this and fold it uh, right to left. Even grab your scissors, take a nick at the top, a very shallow nick. And then this nick is going to, um, did I, yeah, I got it. So this, I didn't get through the other side. Let's do that again. Let's do that again, shall we? Little. Nick. Um, with that nick, you'll be able to help locate the center. And so what I normally do is I will put this on a grid like this and then line up the markings on my hoop with the grid. It also helps me to center up my piece of fabric. If your hoop does not have centers, just grab a marker and find the center. It's not that hard. And that way it'll help you to hoop things. Um, so now if I just put this on here, Terrific. Great. It's hoop. It's ready to go. But it might shift. I mean, it might, it might, if the design is, has a lot of outside and stitching and whatnot, it might, um, it might cause some puffiness or pulling. So what I like to do, I'll spray the back of this. You don't need to get crazy. Just spray it up. So now I'm going to use that. And yes, you can mark these. If I was on a bigger hoop, I would. I would fold it in half and do a little nick here. But I can see where it needs to be um, because of the fact that this is a five by seven hoop and this is five and a half by seven and a half. The hoop is always bigger than the design that will fit in it. Uh, so don't, don't think that this is a larger hoop. It's not. And um, so basically I use the nick located this I made sure this and this, I eyeball everything. Looks about right, looks about right. There's also little marks here that you can't see because I did not mark them, but I can see them. And that helps me to know that I'm lined up pretty even. So with this, I will take this to the machine, I will put it on the machine, and then we will get started with the positioning of it on, on the wool. So we are at my machine and all I need to do is hoop it on. And I've already loaded the design um, into the machine. I use a, a USB to transfer from my computer. 
the design I'm doing is called, um, it's from uh, Embroidery Library, and it just says, Good Morning Pumpkin. So on my machine, what I can do is choose the hoop, and I can see where it's at in the hoop. And if I were to use a larger hoop, I could click this. It won't let me go to the smaller hoops because the design's too big. So I can pick a couple different sizes, see where it's at. But this is the hoop I'm using. This is my five by seven. And so now I can see where it's located. I don't have it dead center. I want it to be a little higher up. So what I did over here, I just adjusted it up or down. You can go right or left. And this is my machine. Not all machines are the same. So don't think you can go on yours and do this. I'm just showing you how I do it on mine. And I learned this by opening up the manual and just really digging into it because I wanted to understand how to use this. And I don't like waiting when I ask questions. <laughs> so I simply found that reading through the manual, I got everything I needed to know and I got it real quick. Um, and so on this machine, you can also scan the hoop. So I could do this and I'm gonna hit okay. And it's gonna get a little noisy for a few minutes. I actually, I think for a minute and I'll show you what it's doing. So it's simply scanning the entire area that gets embroidered. And then you'll see this piece of fabric will come up on the screen. And it's gonna reposition itself dead center. And as you can see, the background is simply the gray fabric. Had I used a larger hoop, you would have seen the entire square and where to position it. But um, essentially my piece of fabric is exactly the size of the five by seven. So I can see that I have it positioned a little bit higher on the fabric. I don't have a dead center. Um, it does say that it's zero, zero up and zero, zero down. That's because I saved it in this position from before. So if I were to hit the center, it would drop it all the way down to where it's, I don't want to do that. So we'll do it anyway, just to show you there. See, and now where I really want it to be, I remember where it was. I had it 0.55 up. So I had it half an inch higher. Now I know this is gonna sound crazy, but I, I know exactly where some things were. Where the bottom of the P was, if I go here, the bottom of the P lined up with the half mark. I remembered that. I just make little notes sometimes to keep a memory of where I wanted things. Um, so, when I save this onto my machine and I load it again, it'll just say zero, zero, but it will be exactly where I saved it from. So um, that's what I did with this one. So now all I'm gonna do is uh, I chose my colors and where I wanted them to pull on, because it's a 10 needle and I wanted to pull um, the black, which is on number two, and then the orange, which is on spool number 10. And then I hit close and then I hit sewing. And then I'm gonna hit lock. And I'm going to do it at 700 so I don't get any thread tops or cuts and I don't have to worry about it and I can walk away. Sometimes at 800 a thread will cut um, and break and then I have to come back and I don't want to come back. And so while that stitches out, we will go get our tab prepped. It's time to prep the tab if we're using cloth instead of cork or vinyl. And this measures one by one because the uh, this tab you can, I just want the tab to be a quarter of an inch. You can make it deeper if you want it. It makes no difference. Um, that's up to you. But the width just has to be an inch because the width of a number three zip is one inch across. So what I do is draw a line dividing the, the tab in half. And then I just iron in the sides to meet that line. Iron this, spin it, iron this. Basically, you're making a double fold piece of bias. That's all this is. Double fold piece of bias tape. It's not on the bias, but that's what it is. Like you would use uh, binding, like you would use on a quilt. 
that's it. And then what you can do is either use um, fabric glue or you can use double-sided tape or pins to hold it in place. And you just put it right on the end, just like so. And then you're just gonna stitch it right across. Um, I usually do about an eighth of an inch from the edge here, from the folded edge. Don't worry about these raw edges because they get caught into the seam allowance, um, so not a big deal. So let's take it over to the machine and then stitch it right on. We've prepped our zip and our design is done. And all we want to do is pop it out of the hoop, like so. The reason we're at the ironing board is because we are going to iron this P44 to the back of the design. I know, it's so crazy. I am not a traditionalist at all. I'm just not. Now you can tear this um, because it tears really nicely or you can trim it. And I, since we sprayed the back and I wanna make sure that uh, it doesn't catch on the bottom of the machine, I'm just gonna trim it. <clears throat> uh, on the feed dogs is what I mean by when I say the machine. Just gonna trim it all around. It really doesn't matter how close you cut this. Um, I always worry about stuff if people are gonna wash it, but I don't advise people washing these. So that's not a real fear. <clears throat> Cause if it, if it was gonna get washed, I would definitely leave about a half an inch distance between all, everything, but it's not, so it's not that big a deal. And that's it. And then what you wanna do is just iron this. And when you iron P44F, you have to use a wool setting with steam. Um, you, if I was making a bag, a big one, yes, I'd be using steam, making sure this was adhering to the lining, but it's, I don't, it doesn't need to. Um, I'm just making sure it sticks a little bit. Again, it's not on the back of a towel, it's not in a bag. Uh, when you use P44F, you do use steam because it activates the glue, but this is already kind of glued on because we use the temporary basting stripe, so we're good. All right, so that's that. And this side is done and we are ready now, since we've already prepped our zip, we're ready to get started and start sewing this up. It's time to sew the tab onto the zip. What you want to remember is to put it on where the flat side of the zip is, not where the point is and where the little open gap is. Because the open gap is the side that opens and this is the side that will be the end where the zip gets pulled back and stops. So you can put this on and you can use your pin to hold it in place or you can use tape, I have tape here, or you can just use this. And I hope you can hear that. The little dog just ran down here. I can't promise that he's gonna be quiet, but he's here and he's stealing. <laughs> mm. I've thought for years to edit all that out. I'm done editing out Winston. So he is a sidekick in the studios of Amy Lynn Designs, along with Abby, who's always quiet, but Winston is usually not quiet. Anyway, and he's leaving. Probably stole something. Um, so you can put this on and then stitch it. If you want, uh, you want to sew it at an eighth of an inch from the, the edge here. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to stitch this because this is for an order and I don't use cloth tabs. I don't love them. I don't, I don't, I have a lot of cork as scraps, so I just prefer using cork for scraps. Um, but so I would slap this underneath here, just like so. And I use this narrow, uh, narrow foot and I stitch real close to that folded edge. But what we're gonna do is we are going to use my cork for this. So um, I'm gonna pull this off and I'm gonna grab the cork tab and I'm gonna show you how to prep that too. So we're gonna set this to the side. My side is over here, a little trash can over there. Um, and I've got my cork tab, which is one by one. I'm gonna put tape, this is a very narrow tape and I believe this is the five millimeter from Tandy Leather. You can get score, you can get the Tandy. This one's permanent. The brown is repositionable. Um, 
and domestic machines don't seem to hate the repositionable as much as they hate the permanent. Uh, the, the needles on the domestics have a hard time plowing through it. So you can also, and this one's, this one's five millimeters. Um, so it's just under a quarter of an inch, but it's not, it's not an eighth of an inch. All right. So that's what you do. So you put, <clears throat> you put a little strip on the end, put it on right side down again on the flat side end where the tab's going to be. And then we're going to stitch it at a quarter of an inch. I shorten my stitch length. And I do stop and um, at the beginning and the end, I do a little back stitch because I've had the cork, I've had the stitches pull out before and I just don't have time for that. So now what I want to do is grab another piece of tape. Do, 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 do. I'm going to put a piece of tape right here. And then I'm going to put a piece of tape on the back. Uh, if you, if you want, this one's cut one by one. If you want, what you can do is cut these at three quarters of an inch and then just wrap it around. So raw edges are exposed on the front and the back. That's fine too. I've been sewing it with the one inch by one inch and then wrap and then doing it, um, face down, then wrapping it around to the back. And then there is no, this is not a raw edge. And you can do this with vinyl or cork. It doesn't matter. So now it's holding it in place. I'm going to flip it over. And when I flip it over, I'm going to fold this edge just to meet the stitch line here. So it's not going to cover it. It's just going to be at it. Right? Like so. The reason I do that is it gives me a good size tab. It's not huge. It's a little bit better than a quarter of an inch. It's probably three eighths. Let's see. Man, I'm good. It's three eighths of an inch. And then what I'm going to do, it's top stitch at an eighth of an inch from the folded edge here. And I'm going to lengthen my stitch. And when you're working with um, cork or vinyl, you want to make sure that your metal foot slides. And this one does. The bottom of this, I've been using it for years, so I've kind of buffed it. So it slides nicely. It glides right on the cork. And I want to make sure that this starts just at the end. Now, I have my hump jumper here. It's always nearby and handy. See, happy, ready to help me. Always ready to help me. Um, what I want to do is at all times, I want to make sure the foot is parallel to the feed dogs. And as you go over, sometimes when you go over the larger teeth on zippers, the front end is up, the back end is only making contact and you kind of get some skip stitches. If you sew really fast, you don't. Uh, but if you go slow, you do. So what you want to do is take a couple stitches Yes, I'm aware that I don't always use this hump jumper like everybody else does because my foot's too narrow. Hump jumper, you're supposed to <laughs> do this and the foot is wide enough that it rides on either side and you just kind of pull it along. Well, as you can see, it goes right into my foot. So what I do is I just use it in the back, lift up the back and that's it. Now I've got nice even stitches. And I'm not going to trim it close because if I do, it might pull out from right there. So I'm just going to leave it. I'm going to set that to the side. And now we're ready to grab our pattern, our, our, um, our, our front piece, both our exterior pieces, both of our lining pieces, and put those together. But we need to go grab it off the machine, and I'll show you what I do with the interfacing on the back that the uh, exterior piece was floated on. We've got all our pieces. We've got our tag. Again, this is for an order. And what we're going to do, I'm going to show you the Butler method. It's kind of fun. If you don't want to watch it here, or if you know it, fast forward, because there's also a video on that. So what I'm going to do here, everything's ready. We've, we've got our pieces. I've got my tape. And what I want to do is on the left-hand side, I put these like this uh, in a mere fashion. So that I remember, because sometimes I'll just be like, tape everything I tape, and I always leave these sides apart. And then when I go and do this, then it's open on this end. And I, I, I don't want to do that. So I am I almost always do it like this. It's just a habit. Because this is the end that we do the butler method on, and we want to pull the zip in between the seam allowance, and we don't want tape there. So I'm just going to tape, tape, tape. Put those to the side and then I'm going to grab my lining pieces and I want to confirm that I cut these in the right size. I did. Uh, my first 
when I started making these pouches, I was just cutting them at five by seven. And then I realized that I really truly wanted a five by seven pouch. So then I just started cutting them five and a half by seven and a half, but I still had the fabric and well, I would really suck if I had the wrong fabric right now. All right, so I did the same thing here. These are mirrored. Tape, tape, tape. And I really do try to get this tape right up to the edge of the fabric because of the fact that it is almost a quarter of an inch. And I sew it a quarter of an inch. That's what our seam allowance is going to be. Uh, so I really, really don't want the tape showing behind the zipper. All right, so the first one we're gonna use is this one. And you would think we're using this one, but when we put this on top, because we're gonna sandwich the zip, oh look, it's this side. Yeah, so we're not using that one. So put that over there, put that over there, and we're ready to use this one. And so now what we wanna do is grab our zip and place it nicely across the top here. So we've got our zip, this is the end. It's gonna peel off the tape. Sometimes the tape comes off easy, sometimes it doesn't. I don't know why. Now all you wanna do is make sure that you butt this edge up to this edge. It's not gonna be pinned down, so you kinda of have to hold it. And don't stretch your zip as you go. Just place it. Now as I get here, you see it kinda of bumps out. You can slide the zip back over there. The bump is now gone. You can just gently press it down. And again, I don't trim these. I like to just leave them. I do trim, I trim almost all the time, but um, in this instance, because it didn't complete right at these edges, I'm not trimming it. You can even take this and tie it if you want. So say you, you don't like it dangling there, you can take it. and tie it in a knot. These are my hemostats. You can get them online at Amazon. Um, I know the Viking Gallery in Joanne also carries them. So now I did that, now I, now I can trim this. And this one I cut too short, so I can't. So we're just gonna, we're just gonna deal with this side. All right, so there's that. Now what we wanna do is grab this piece, peel it off and make sure that the tape stays on. These are all over my studio, by the way, like everywhere. And when Winston walks by me, he's usually chewing something and it's, I know what it is. He loves those stupid things. Yes, he steals them. No, he doesn't get very many because I'm pretty, I know he's up to no good. All right. So there's that, it's placed down. We're gonna flip it over. We always wanna start at the end where the tab is. What we wanna do though, is take our pen, and we're gonna mark it. We are gonna mark it three quarters of an inch from the end. Now you think, okay, Amy, we'll go grab the other one and let's mark that. Mm, no, we're not gonna do that. Because when we top, when we stitch the, the, the uh, zipper in on the next piece, the lining will be the right side up. So now I've shortened my stitch to three and I'm gonna sew this in at a quarter of an inch. And again, I wanna make sure I'm starting at the end. And I take a couple stitches. Ooh, I think my thread came out, it did. So we're gonna re-thread that. And this sometimes takes me a while because I have old eyes. <laughs> Apparently they start to go at the age of 40, so. Mine have started to go. Holy cow, that was faster than usual. All right, so it's in. Take a couple stitches, back stitch, and I'm just gonna stitch straight across. Now I'm coming up to the zipper head, pull, I wanna move it out of the way. Don't go this way towards you because you might pull it right off the zipper. Now when I get to this blue dot, I'm gonna stop. And if I have to, I will lift the foot and position this so it lands right at that blue dot. Now we're at the blue dot. I'm grabbing the hemostats. I'm gonna break this open and I just wanna pull it. I am pulling it at a 90. 
So I'm not pulling it at a 45, I'm pulling it at a 90. And I'm just gonna stitch straight across. And that's it. And yes, your machine can sew over a nylon zipper. I'm gonna drop the needle. I didn't cut anything. And I'm gonna go over it again. I like the added security. And no, I am not cutting this. Just leave it alone. There's no reason to cut that. Now I'm gonna lengthen my stitch and I'm gonna fold this back and I'm gonna close my zipper. By closing it, it, it gives me, um, uh, it's easier for me to make this smooth. I never top stitch my lining with the front because when you do and you go to turn it right side out, you get the very weird angle over here. And this is how you avoid it. And no, your zipper will never get caught in the lining. I'm gonna back that up. Your zipper will almost never get caught in the lining. And I'm not saying it will, I'm just saying, you know what, I'm not gonna say never because when I do that, it just makes me look like a fool. It might, who knows? I've never had it happen. How's that sound? All right. And when you top stitch, you don't have to back stitch at all. And that's that. So now I can trim these. And we've got the front done. So now let's get ready, grab the other pieces, and do the back side. We've got our back pieces, and we are going to attach them. And all we need to do, our main focus is lining things up on that end. So you want to peel off the tape. And well, it's probably easiest to do it with this side down, open up the zip, and then just line up this edge right here. And once you get it started, <laughs> it's very sticky. Uh, you can easily peel this back or lay this down on this, excuse me. All right. And then you can see there's a bump again. Just wanna slide it out of the way. Slide, 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 slide. Okay, now we're gonna grab this piece, do the same thing. And we really wanna stay focused on making sure that this is lined up with this corner. It's okay if it turns out that Maybe one side's a touch shorter than the other. It's, it's not a big deal. Trust me. It won't make, like if this side is not quite, it's, it's fine, trust me. All right, so now we also wanna grab our ruler and mark it three quarters of an inch from the end. And we're just going to stitch this. I'm gonna slide the zip further down. It's shortened to three. I'm gonna get it started, take a couple stitches. Now, yeah, I'm going over a hump and I could use the hump jumper, but I'm not, um, I know I'm not gonna skip any stitches and no one's gonna see this. So it's okay if it ends up being a little bit shorter. If it ended up being shorter than longer, it's fine. And I sew pretty quick in this respect. So I'm coming up to the zipper head, zipper pull. I'm gonna slide it out of the way. And I'm gonna just continue to this blue dot. And when I get there, if I have to hand crank, I will. I just wanna end up in and close to that blue dot. You can see my needle has landed right at the blue dot. I'm gonna grab my hemostats, my handy hemostats. I'm gonna grab the zip, pull it at a 90. Now, the lining fabric is always softer, so it has a tendency to buckle a little bit. So I just wanna make sure that it's flat and going to, the, to this corner. And now I'm just gonna stitch straight across. I'm gonna pull it out again. And I'm gonna put it right back underneath here. I'm gonna stitch across it one more time for good measure. And now we're gonna open it up and we're gonna to top stitch. We've just done the 
Butler method on the other side. And now we're going to close this up so we can see how it turned out. I'm going to rotate it. And you can see that it is identical. And now we want to top stitch this, top stitch alongside this side of the zipper and all the linings, all these to the left. We don't want to catch them. And we want to make sure that this, which is the seam allowance, is caught under the exterior piece, just like we did on this side. You can see it was caught underneath there. I didn't show you. I'm sorry. But yes, that's that's the ticket. I mean, it would you would you would feel it, and it would be weird underneath here. It just naturally wants to go under itself like that. I'm lengthening my stitch. I do it at four. And I'm just finger pressing it. You can take it to the iron if you want to. You can use double sided tape, whatever you want to do. And that's that. So now what we want to do is open this up. And, and um, ooh, before we do that, what we want to do is flip all the lining to the one side and we want to add our tag. I got these fun little tags from Inked Papers in there in Wisconsin. And where I put my tag is one inch up from the bottom. Why did I choose one inch? Because I knew I would remember it. <laughs> it's really that simple. It's really that simple. Actually, I'm not going to sew it a quarter inch. I'm going to sew it at an eighth of an inch and I'm just tacking it down. That's it. And you always want to put it right side down onto the front side. Because when you flip this, it's going to be... <gasps> there it is. Yeah. All right, so now what we want to do is set this whole thing up and we're going to pin it in place so that we can stitch it. So the first part we want to be concerned with when, when pinning this is that the exterior of the lining, the exterior of the lining, this little seams, these nice pretty seams match up perfectly. So I don't use pins a lot and this is the one instance where I do. So I poked, if you hear um, like weird lump thumping sounds, it's a dog upstairs chewing a bone. Of course it is. My house is never quiet, ever. Um, so I, I can't stop that. Anyway, all right, so here's the next spot. Same thing, we just wanna make sure that this and this match up. So I just look down on it, just like so, and grab a pin and pin it in place. And I pin it real close to that. Now, if you're, if you're a pinner, put another one here. Now, because uh, felt has a tendency to, to shift a tiny little bit, I will stick pins in both corners. And then I will go down here and pin these. All right. And I like to start right at one of these seams. It doesn't matter which one. Um, when I see seams, I mean these. It doesn't matter which one. Actually, and I typically sew the exterior first, then the lining. I have a habit. All right. And I, like I said, I'm starting right on it because my next stitch is going to be right onto this. Shorten your stitch length back to three. I'm using quarter. Um, and I always backstitch there, it's just a habit, uh, quarter inch seam allowance. You see all this yellow tape, there's a video on how I do this and what the purpose of it is. And right now I'm guiding it right down here. This is my quarter inch mark. So I'm using that as my guide. As I come up to the bottom, I have another mark. And this 12 right here is lined up with the needle and I'm gonna stop right around that quarter inch mark. I'm gonna pull this pin out. Cause I, while I can sew over the pins, I don't like to. All right, I'm coming up to it. And that's about it right there. And there we go, it's perfect. And now I'm gonna do this side. Same thing, and I'm also pretty good like I, I don't know if you guys can see it, but the foot turns up right here. 
And that little corner where it turns up is a quarter of an inch from here to there. There we go. All right, now we're going up this side. Here we go. Now as I'm sewing this way, this is the end that has the tab and it gets a little harder to push down. So what you wanna do is just be ready with your hump jumper. I always take the thinner side for this one and I just keep stitching. If you don't, what happens is the, the piece on the bottom and the piece on the top have a tendency to slide. And this is where your seam is and you don't want those seams to, to, be, to slide apart from one another. It's okay if it's a little bit, but when it's exaggerated, ah, that's just frustrating. So we've hit the lining and what we wanna do now is continue down and I typically take, take a larger seam allowance. So roughly about 3 eighths of an inch. I'm gonna get down to the bottom and I'm gonna pivot. It's between a quarter and three eighths. And I'm just gonna stitch about, hmm, I need enough to turn it. So it, it's, it's about an inch and a half. That's where you would, um, I have glue on me, uh, where you would stitch it to. I always have something on me, glue, tape. All right, I'm gonna stitch it all the way across again. I just need a gap to be able to, to, to turn the, the bag. I'm gonna pull this out, I'm gonna stitch to the corner here. Like I said, between a quarter to three eighths of an inch. And then I'm just gonna gradually come back to the quarter of an inch here. And I'm gonna pull this pin out because I don't wanna hit it. Now I'm coming up to this hump. I'm gonna put it underneath the back. And I am back at the beginning. I'm gonna go around and trim these. And to get these nice corners, there is a trick. I cut across and then I cut towards that. I'm just trimming it up, that's it. Same over here. You don't wanna cut the stitches, so be careful with that. Same goes this way. And you don't have to worry about the, and the lining, it's not a big deal. But now you wanna open it up between those stitches that we, where we backstitched. Now we're gonna to go to the iron and steam it because that is what makes it easy to turn it right side out. I grabbed my little pointer, my plastic pointer thing, and we are at the ironing board. And all we wanna do is steam these corners. Now we've already cut open the bottom. I just wanna steam this up both sides and you move pretty quick because if you don't, the steam's gonna dissipate, it's not gonna be uh, soft. You're not gonna be able to, to make any difference with poking these corners out. I don't wanna get too violent and it's not, it's not hard, but if you don't move quickly and if you get too violent, you might poke right through the seams and you don't wanna do that. And then that's that. But doing it while it's uh, soft and steamy, it makes so much, everything so much easier. So, 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 so much. And I just roll it, roll and tug, roll and tug. And then this will just get flipped and poked inside. And now what we wanna do is make sure that this end pokes out and it did. Cause if you need to, you can always steam your cork or your nylon just, or your uh, vinyl, just don't touch it. Don't touch the vinyl with your iron. That's just a bad idea. So now what we wanna do is a little iron, soften it up, flatten it out, tuck everything in. We will take it back to the machine and, and close up that hole. But I like it to all smooth itself out at the ironing board like so, and that's it. And so now you can see you've got these nice little corners 
it's not all dented in. And I don't, it always bothers me when these ends, when the bottom is kind of curved up. So to get that, you just roll it out. You steam it, whether you're working with nylon or wool or cotton, and, and then you just kind of push it and pull it down. And you hold it in place while it cools off. Because if you don't, as it cools off, it'll go back to where it was and you don't want it to do that. So now we'll go back to the machine and we will stitch that all up. All we have left to do is close up the bottom and put our ribbon on the zipper pull. So just kind of pull it out. And it almost wants to do it itself. That's it. That's all there is to it. You can pin it. You don't have to. Usually just lays nice and flat. I have a tendency to pull these extra little strings and trim them. I do not like them. Shorten your stitch. If it was longer, it should be at three. Take, take a couple stitches forward, go back. You want to lock it in. And you want to make sure that you're catching the bottom. Now you can hand stitch this if you want with a ladder stitch and then no one would ever see it. I don't know anybody that shoves their head in the bags to see where, where we might have birthed it from or any of that. So we do because, well, it's what we do. But people who buy our stuff don't. So I'm totally okay. I did, I did it once with the ladder stitch and realized how much I didn't. I like the ladder stitch because it's fun to do. Um, I love the result, but I realized it was unnecessary, so I don't do it. And now you just want to tuck it back in, into those corners, and that's that. And your little bag is done. And you have the perfect end, and it's, it's perfect. And you have your nice butler end, again, well done. Applaud yourself. Give yourself a little pat on the back. But what we want to do now is grab our ribbon, because ribbon's fun. And grabbing that and a lighter, which you have no idea how hard it was to find these at the store. Now for this, what I cut it at is, uh, this is just, Let's see here, three eighths of an inch wide ribbon. I like to cut it at the angle and I will cut it. It's seven inches long and I'm going the wrong direction. Don't make me do math. I do it at about seven and a half, eight inches. And what I wanna do is I want the angle at this end to be the same angle. So, this is about seven and a half. I just measured it and I'm just going to cut it the same way. So you can see they're both the same. The trick to this is burning the ends. Just want to melt them a little bit. Don't touch them. <laughs> Ask me how I know. So I'm, I grab them before just to try to smooth them out and they just get sticky. And then you just want to put them together like so. And on not with the zip this way, but with the head this way, I'm just gonna pull this through. Like so. I'm making it harder than it is. There we go. That's it. And that's all there is to it. And now you have yourself a cute little good morning pumpkin pouch. I hope you guys enjoyed that tutorial. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. If you'd like to join my group, we would love to have you. The actual paper pattern is in the group in the files and um, it is a freebie. You can also pick it up on Etsy for a whole whopping dollar. Why? Because I can't put anything on Etsy or on my website, which is currently powered by Etsy, uh, unless I charge something. So until I get the website loaded, and um, off of Etsy, and that's when it'll be free. But until then, it is on Etsy. It's also at amylindesigns.com, and it is a whole whopping dollar, or you can join my group, Patterns by Amy Lynn, and pick it up for free. Thanks again. Have a great day.